Hi, everybody. Hi, everyone. We want to welcome you all today to this edition of Tribe Talk. Um, we're going to let everybody kind of get in the room and get situated and, and go over a few rules before we get started. We've got a really great talk for you coming up today. Uh, Dr. Dan Newsom is going to be joining us and he's a good friend of Dr. V's and she's known him for quite some time. He's got a really incredible background on how he got into um, holistic medicine and holistic healing. And so uh, we're going to talk to him today about viruses and immunity, and he also has a lot of background in dealing with autoimmune issues. So um, for those of you who've been joining us week after week, get those questions in early. We'll have some time toward the end of the podcast to get to your questions for Dr. Dan. Uh, there is the chat box there on the bottom uh, of your screen, and there's also a Q&A box. So you can use either of those to submit your questions today. And if you wanna hop in the chat box and say hi and tell us where you're from, uh, we'll just wait a few more minutes for everybody to get in. And, and Dr. Dan's gonna be joining us in just a moment. He actually had an emergency he had to go attend to, uh, but he'll be joining us in just a few minutes. Yeah, hi everyone. So glad to have you here today. Please jump in and say hello. Uh, we're also streaming this live on Facebook. Um, so um, if, if, you, uh, if you can find it there, then that's great too. Um, yeah, I found out uh, just here a few minutes ago that Dr. Dan ran over to a friend's uh, clinic, uh, uh, an MD friend of his who has a patient who dislocated his shoulder and so he called Dr. Dan and Dr. Dan ran over there to help uh, put his shoulder back in socket. So um, he is going to be here in just a couple of minutes. He was just running behind, um, helping out another colleague um, and helping out a, a patient. Um, I don't know if any of you have ever had a dislocated shoulder. It's pretty uncomfortable. So um, I'm sure that uh, the patient was super grateful to be able to have Dr. Dan fix that for him really quick. Absolutely. We've got a lot of people chiming in in the chat box. Lisa from Endicott, New York. Thanks for being here, Lisa. Uh, we got Steph from Northern California. Uh, Caitlin joining us from Austin. Um, we've got people from Virginia, from Stargazer joining us from Toronto. People from all over the place uh, here with us today, Dr. V. Wow, that's great. It looks like, yeah, we've got people from coast to coast people from all over the place. We're so super excited, even Canada, like that's awesome. And uh, hey, Kimberly, out in Copper's Cove. Love you, girl, thanks for jumping in today. I know you've had a busy couple weeks and you weren't able to join us live for the last couple, um, but uh, I know you got to see the uh, recordings of those awesome interviews with Dr. Judy Mikovits. Oh, guys, and I've got some information to share with you. Let me just tell you about this while we're waiting. Um, and let me make sure here that, um, give me one second. I wanna make sure that uh, Dr. Dan's not here. I wanna read you something. How many of you heard the interviews that we did with, uh, with Dr. Judy Mikovits? You guys want to jump in and say if you heard that? Yeah, okay, good. So I want to read you something that I got from her assistant this morning. Um, as you know, she's been interviewing with people all over the country. She was uh, invited to interview um, in Italy as well uh, for some of the, I don't know, parliament or government over there um, because there's, you know, people are trying to expose a lot of the, uh, truth that needs to come out or expose the lies, but let me just tell you about this. There is a, um, and I'm going to share this with everybody. There is a um, petition that was just formed, and I'm going to share this with you guys. This is so that she can be, so that Dr. Judy Mikovits uh, will be subpoenaed by the Senate uh, to um, testify before Congress um, on the corruption of Dr. Anthony Fauci. And uh, this is really big, guys. Um, she is out there to expose the truth. And if we can 
um, all sign this petition and we can get her um, in front of Congress to testify. This could be life-changing and life-saving, not just for us here in the United States, but for people around the world. And so um, I'll be sharing this with you guys into the chat box and I want you um, to take a look at it. And if you feel led to sign that petition, please do so and then share it with everyone that you know. So super excited. I'll go ahead and do that now. Um, I think um, Anne had some other stuff she wanted to catch up with you on. Yeah, you know, I see Dr. Dan joining us in the attendee box. If you want to bring him in, I'm going to introduce him to everyone. I want to tell you a little bit about him uh, while we're bringing him in. Now, Dr. Newsom grew up in a family of naturopaths. He was the only biological son to Scott and Joanne Newsom. And he was seven years old when his parents started adopting children. And they didn't stop until they adopted 32 kids. Now, his Parents cared for many children with special needs, and this experience inspired his career choice, and it gave him a passion for giving back and for healing through natural techniques. And actually, at the age of 20, Dr. Newsom became the youngest licensed naturopath in U.S. history at that time. His path has taken him to several countries to practice, including Mexico, South America, and the Caribbean. Um, so we're going to talk to him a little bit today about his background and how that's really influenced uh, what he does as a practitioner today and how he works uh, with his patients and his clients. So Dr. Dan, thanks so much for, for joining us today. Uh, good morning. Thank you, ladies. I apologize for being so late. I got a call on the way over here from an MD friend of mine. He's like, Doc, we got somebody here with dislocated shoulder. <laughs> Can you swing by and put it back in? <laughs> I was like, oh, I got an interview. I, well, it won't take long. You usually do, do this real quick. I was like, okay. <laughs> yeah. The longer you wait, the more swollen it gets, the harder it gets to set. So I said, okay, all right. All right. <laughs> yeah, we were, we were actually sharing that with everyone and letting them know. Um, and, you know, you're absolutely right. You've got to get these things set as, as quickly as possible or, or it can get really bad. When I did all my sports medicine for all of those years, I was, you know, resetting shoulders and um, and and um, even like I remember one time one of my football players had his pinky went from like normal length to about this long because it got it got it actually went down into the side of his hand and I had to like pull his pinky back out of his hand, you know, and yeah, it was crazy. We did all kinds. Oh my gosh, we did all kinds of different like crazy things when we were doing sports medicine. It was a, it was pretty amazing. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Yep. Yep. Oh. Um, well, Dr. Dan, we well, heard a little bit just now about your background and kind of how you grew up with so many siblings, adopted, adopted siblings in your household, and that really inspired you. It, it taught you a lot about healing from a natural standpoint, right? Right, right. Um, I actually grew up making the herbal extracts and making the homeopathic remedies for all my disabled brothers and sisters as I was growing up. It was, um, I was about 12 when we started, um, we would have physical therapists that would come in and help the ones that were in the wheelchairs and whatnot. And I started learning all the physical therapy that they needed to have done on a daily basis. So I became the, the PT assistant <laughs> in, uh, I did that till I went off to college at 18. It was, uh, it was just a daily thing that we did. We'd get them out, and just, you know, stretch their arms, stretch their legs and get them in their braces and the whole, whole nine yards. Um, it was, it was very inspiring because um, well, today, for instance, of my 32 adopted brothers and sisters, uh, there were nine of them in wheelchairs when we started, when they were adopted. Uh, today, there's only four that are still in wheelchairs. One of those that was in a wheelchair is a black belt in Taekwondo now. Um, another one, another two actually, uh, graduated from different universities on football scholarships. <laughs> oh, wow. That's amazing. 
And so I grew up watching this stuff happen and taking part in, in some of the, you know, some of the therapies and, and preparing their, their medicines that we gave them and, and so on and so forth. So I, I, I fell in love with it. You know, it was, it was just, um, and, and going from, you know, high school right into medical school and the naturopathic medicine and that whole route was just very, very natural for me. I, it was just a total, um, you know, hand in glove type thing, you know, and so it's been a perfect match. I've been in practice for 26 years now and um, been, I've practiced in seven different countries. Um, I've been... At, at this point, we're, we're my my next uh, target number is sixteen thousand. I'm between fifteen and sixteen thousand patients I've treated at this point. I don't know the exact number, but <laughs> but incredible. Um, that's it's it is a passion. I I personally believe I was born and bred to do what I do. That's yes, my what I believe. I absolutely believe that too. You know, in the time that I've had the opportunity to get to know you, um, you know, I, I have nothing but the best things to say about you. Um, you know, you're just an incredible healer and extremely brilliant. You're just so smart. It's just, it's, it's almost just unheard of. <laughs> I think, you know, you can take a very, very simple, simple, um, you know, or you can take very complex, uh, you know, uh, things, um, you know, when it comes to medicine and you can simplify it and make it really easy. So, and that's what we want to do today. We want to jump in and we want to talk about uh, treatments for COVID. We want to talk about treatments for viruses and compare COVID to other viruses, right? Like that's really good because I feel like so many people believe like this is something that's so different that we've never seen before. And in some aspects it is, but in other aspects it's not. And so, and I, and I think if we can put things into perspective, right? And, and, uh, and show people what they can do, not just with this particular viral strain, but with other viral strains too, as far as treatment and prevention, I think that's really gonna, you know, really give a lot of people um, a lot of tools that they can have in their toolbox. Right, very much so. There's some things with, just, just basic things about COVID. Okay, so, in our lifetime, at all human beings, okay, everyone on the planet, between 25%, you know, a quarter to a third of all the viruses that you ever contract in your lifetime are going to be coronaviruses. It's just, we, and that's always been that way. <laughs> it's always been that way. This isn't something new to our system, number one. Okay, so the basic structure, the outlining structure that, the, that, gives it its name, a coronavirus, those little, if you look at the, the little spikes that come out of it, you know, that's the corona uh, virus uh, structure, okay? That structure has been around, you know, long before we ever knew about it, okay? And most of your 24-hour flus uh, or, or your 24-hour your stomach flu or whatever, most of those that you have in your lifetime are going to be a coronavirus that causes that, okay? A coronavirus. So there's, there's thousands of different versions of this, but it, it's actually something very common for us to, to contract, okay? Which is uh, partly why they were messing with it and enhancing it in a laboratory because it, made, it was a perfect delivery system for something worse, okay? And so from that side, yeah, they've, they've really, uh, they created something that sh people shouldn't have ever been exposed to uh, on, on that side. On the other side, it's a simple virus that our body does deal with, it has been dealing with for thousands of years. And if we give the body what it needs in order to fight this, <laughs> it already knows how to do that. Okay, so there's so, so we need to think of it along those lines. What do we need to be taking to enable our system to fight this off? Because our system recognizes coronaviruses. They're nothing new. This is something that's been around for forever and ever. And the human body knows how to deal with a coronavirus. 
you know, the bottom line. Um, something to, to back up the, the concept that we are capable of fighting off viruses is think of the Epstein-Barr virus, okay? Uh, anyone out there that knows anything about Epstein-Barr knows that it's not an easy virus to deal with. In conventional Western medical diagnostics, we have two tests that we do when we're testing someone for Epstein-Barr. We have the initial test where we're looking to see if it's something new that they've just contracted and, and, and the immune system is just starting to form an attack against it. And what we're testing is to see whether or not the immune system has created antibodies to the shell around the Epstein-Barr virus. Okay, this is your initial test. You have your other test where we're looking at whether or not the immune system's developed an antibody to the nucleus of the virus or not, okay? And in both cases, what we're testing for is whether or not the immune system's figured out how to destroy this thing or not. This is, this is what we're testing, okay? In <laughs> this, this virus is way harder to deal with. This is a retrovirus, and it's harder to deal with than some coronavirus. Coronaviruses, again, are on the, the viral scale. They're not real high on the, the difficulty uh, for your immune system to deal with. And we already have on these other viruses where we can test to see whether or not the immune system has figured out how to destroy the virus or not. Um, and that's Western medicine. Those are Western medical tests. This isn't even something alternative. This is, these are conventional uh, lab tests that we do. Um, so I'm bringing this up to give you the, the <laughs> to show you that we already know that the immune system is fully capable of attacking a virus in multiple stages of that viral infection. And this COVID thing is no different. The, bi the body can attack it, it can overcome it. We just have to enable it. One of, uh, one of the ways I explain to my patients that uh, to put it into a conceptual place where they can get their mind wrapped around it is how chronic disease becomes chronic. How do you get chronically ill and stay chronically ill? Okay, the, what has to happen in order for anyone to become chronically ill is there has to be more factors stacked up against their immune system than their immune system can adapt to. When their immune system can't adapt anymore, it crumbles and our defenses fall, at which time, whatever we're dealing with overruns us, okay? And it could be, the, th the thing is, it doesn't matter what that list of things that are attacking you and, and whatnot is gonna be different with everyone. Individually, when that list of, of things that have <laughs> piled up on your immune system, when they crumble your immune system, it's that whole list of things that you have to deal with. So chronically ill people aren't chronically ill because of one factor. It's not a virus, it's not a heavy metal, it's not a environmental chemical, it's not a nutritional deficiency, it's probably all of those and multiple, <laughs> multiples of all of those that have ganged up on your immune system and crumbled it. In, this is why chronic disease is a, a big knot that we have to untangle and we have to you know, get it all unraveled so that we can you know, enable the immune system to start defending the person again, okay? And that whole process is, is what we have to do with chronic illness. But what's interesting is with an acute illness, which is what this COVID issue is, it's a, an acute illness, we still have to enable the immune system to withstand that onslaught, okay? When the immune system doesn't have the ability to stand up and defend you, it won't, okay? Therefore, what, what's, what's our task at hand? Our task at hand is 
getting your defenses up, enabling your immune system to defend you. That's what has to happen. Um, I have personally discussed this issue with 18 ministers of health or secretary of health and human services of, of 18 different countries in the last two months. <laughs> the one thing that all of us can agree on <laughs> is the fact that a strong, healthy immune system is the only defense that you have against this. And enhancing your immune system and enabling it to overcome this is really the only real treatment for this. Um, there are medications that can be taken. And they've been all over the news. Uh, Plaquenil. I, and correct me if I'm wrong, but Plaquenil, we've been using that for years and years and years in people with autoimmune disorders to destroy their immune system or stop their immune system's ability to have an inflammatory response. <laughs> this is what Plaquenil has been used for for years. Okay. Um, that's your uh, hydroxychloroquine. Okay. Uh, Plaquenil. In, they've been using that for people with lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, and things like this for years and years and years because it will stop the immune system's ability to create a cytokine storm or a, a massive uh, inflammatory response, which is great in, in these cases that are in that position. That's great. Uh, for everyone else that isn't in a cytokine storm, <laughs> to take this preventatively is taking your immune system and handcuffing it so it can't fight. Okay, the immune system only produces symptoms of an illness when it is defending the person. When it's fighting, it creates symptoms. If the immune system does not fight, you can be infected and not have any symptoms. Okay, so there's some dangers with the, the, the conventional approach. Uh, my, my concern is the people taking this or the people that they've given this to um, and that had COVID while they, you know, and have recovered, has their immune system actually figured out how to defend them from this in the future? Uh, and I'm, I'm worried about this fall. When flu season comes this fall, oh boy, I, you know, not only, you know, if you listen to Dr. Mikovits, the... Uh, Oh, the uh, the connection between the flu vaccine and, and COVID, you know, how the flu vaccine prepped everyone to get COVID. Okay, that's that's a <laughs> that's pretty interesting. Um, and how everywhere that has been hit the hardest is where they have you they you know last year used all kinds of experimental flu vaccines. That's uh, you know that's some pretty good information. I personally am, am concerned about this fall. I think uh, what we saw this, this flu season is nothing compared to what's coming, personally. So, Therefore, we need to take this time. We need to, this summer, we need to be doing everything we can to enhance our immune systems, build our systems up, detoxify our systems to get all the garbage out of the way so the immune system, you know, the immune system can actually do its job Number one, number two, then do things every, everything we can to get the immune system function, you know, functioning in as functional as possible. Uh, otherwise, we're going to go into this. Uh, we're going to go into this flu season uh, unprepared. Having, yeah, having some unpreparedness. So, so I've got a question um, for the individuals that were having, you know, like a life-threatening reaction to to. Right. Uh, um, you know, to COVID, um, right. those, those who were fortunate enough, and I say fortunate enough, you know, because they survived, those were the ones, the ones who were fortunate enough to get the um, hydroxychloroquine right. and made it to the other side. You know, that's wonderful. Like drugs, Great. Can, sometimes, I mean, Absolutely. like they can save lives. That's what emergency medicine is for. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> But my question is, because I heard you say something, and I just want to kind of get some clarity on this. Because the mechanism of action of that medication is to shut the immune system down so that it's not having this like 
over response that's causing so much inflammation that it can actually, you know, kill somebody. Right. Does this mean that the side effect, one of the side effects for them is going to be that they, that they did not develop antibodies. And so they could reach my fear in the fall. That that's exactly my, that's my concern. Yeah. That's exactly my concern in, in shutting down the, that inflammatory process. This is the immune. Okay. So we, we got your, your innate immunity in your adaptive immunity, your innate immunity for, is what produces the inflammatory process, right? It's your adaptive immunity that produces the antibodies. But if you shut one down, it, it doesn't activate the other. <laughs> That's what I was um, concerned about. This, yeah. That's this is my concern. Yeah, this is my concern. So, you know, they're, they're, um, they need to be doing things just because they got over it. Doesn't mean they, it's not going to come back. Right. And, and so, and so, you know, knowing that, I mean, and it is a virus, we can't run from the virus. And, and for us to even, you know, become fearful of the virus is just, you know, I mean, that's, that's not an option for us. So, you know, we, we, you know, we've been living and coexisting with viruses for many, many years. And, and, and uh, just like we have discovered over the years that a lot of the bacteria that we were once fearful of, they actually protect us and keep us healthy and we can't survive without them. We've learned the same thing about viruses. And I think that's really important that we should just spend a couple of minutes before we start getting into different kinds of protocols, things that you and I are doing, right? That we wanna share with everybody um, for prevention, for treatment, things like that. You know, I think that, you know, if you could talk just a little bit on that, because it's so important for us to understand, like we, we are a part of the ecosystem of this planet Viruses are not bad. In right. fact, we have even found out that some viruses, um, you know, are preventing people later on in life from getting cancers and from, you know, getting these other types of diseases. So while we may get sick from a virus, um, you know, what it's doing in the long run is giving us these antibodies and building up our immune system so that we don't end up getting cancers and other things down the road. Can you talk about that for just a Absolutely. little bit? Oh, of course, of course. Um, if you've followed me or if you watched any of my videos, I talk about the microbiome, 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 <laughs> the gut microbiome, how important the gut microbiome is. In our, in our gut microbiome, we have about 5,000 different strains of bacteria. Dr. Nizam, uh, can you, I'm yes. sorry, can you turn your volume up a little bit? I think a couple of oh, sure. listeners are having a hard time hearing you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Perfect. Thank you. How's that? Is that better? I Excellent. Believe. Okay, very good. Sorry about that. Thank you. So if you've watched my videos, if you've followed me much, you, you've, I'm, you had to have heard about the microbiome, the gut microbiome, and, and how essential the microbiome is to our immunity in our entire immune system. Okay, so the, the microbiome is, 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 uh, is our gut flora. It, it is, it's made up of fungus and bacteria in our gut that that keep us healthy right they are our friends very much our friends what's interesting in, is that's the microbial biome when we look at the virome okay the viral biome of the human being it's really interesting that our genetics you realize that 10 percent of the total genome of the human being of human beings <laughs> is made up of snippets of different viruses okay our very genetics have massive amount of virus material in them okay it, each individual has we have all kinds of virus material all the way down to our genetics okay really interesting thing um what all of the that virus material in our genetics does for us is it gives our immune system a library of information of how to deal with all these things. Okay, and it's super important. It's very, very important. We're all born with this and it's just passed down generation to generation. And that's, that's great. Um, what that means is that we are, we're pre-programmed <laughs> with a, an antiviral library, okay? Which is great, it, that's great. Um, the thing about viruses is depending on the state of our 
our internal environment, our, our biological terrain inside our body, number one. Number two, the, the state of our immune system. Uh, these, are, these two factors, when we come in contact with a virus that we don't maybe have enough, you know, we only had maybe half a volume in the library <laughs> of info on that particular virus, so we don't have great immunity to it, so we do pick it up. If we have a terrible internal, we have a, uh, you know, trashed <laughs> internal environment where it's just messy and dirty and full of all kinds of garbage, that's a perfect place for a virus or any other type of bug to take up residence. Okay, that also puts our immune system in a pro-inflammatory state. So your reaction to a virus is going to be way worse because you were already irritated, already inflamed. Your, your level of toxicity was already high. Nutritional deficiencies were high. The overall state of the system wasn't too good to begin with. Therefore, your immune system, if it has a response, it's probably going to have a hyper, like an, a knee-jerk response, overreacting, over-response. And so what do we do about this? Do we wait till we have that big response and then do something? Or do we prepare ourselves as if there is something lurching around the corner, you know? If there's something uh, waiting for us that, we, that gives us time to prepare. Therefore, we have to clean up that internal environment. We have to feed that immune system. We have to give it everything it needs so that it can do its job. When we, when we do that, we clean the environment and we feed the immune system, our total level of inflammation starts to drop. Therefore, when we do have a reaction to a virus or an infection, our reaction isn't so, ugh, just, it's not an explosion. It's just a reaction. You feel bad for a day or two and you're okay. You know, you don't end up in the hospital with a cytokine storm and your lungs shutting down. <laughs> so I've got, I just had a thought. So I've, I've got a question. We can kind of go back and forth on this. A lot of people are already, you know, people who are healthy, right? Right healthy right because they're not in the hospital so they must be healthy um they are already living with a good amount of systemic or body-wide inflammation in their body and we as right. functional doctors we see this all the time um you know when people come to us and they like well i'm having a hard time losing weight or i'm having fatigue or i think my hormones are out of balance or just things like that we're not even going into the super chronic illnesses we're talking about like stuff that's super common with people like oh i'm constipated just things like that like little things that people just kind of shove it under the rug and they just keep pressing forward um but but those who are lucky enough to you know think to see a functional medicine or holistic doctor before they end up in a really chronic disease state when they come see us we typically find when we start looking under the hood we find I'm like wow like you actually have some systemic inflammation going on yeah so assuming that um that we already you know that some of us already have in inflammatory issues going on and we don't even know it then when we get slammed with our with a, you know with an immune response which is good because our body's going to town like it's doing what it needs to right. do and it's telling us like you go lay down you rest let me do my my work it's not going to feel real good but I'm gonna raise your body temperature we're going to kill this off i'm going to cause some inflammation so we can kill this off i've got all the mechanisms in place to take care of this but you just need to lay down and drink some water and sleep so that i can do my job but if they already right. have inflammation to begin with then their body mounts an inflammatory response. Now the inflammation is way up here. Do you think that that's kind of yes. a that's through the roof? Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. That's exactly what. Okay, so think of a on a scale of one to ten. Okay, if a person's, you know, uh, let's say a healthy person's level of inflammation should only be down at maybe a three. Okay. Therefore, it's, it's totally manageable. They really don't have a whole lot of symptoms from it. If they increase to a five, they're starting to have symptoms because of the inflammation they're, they're carrying in their system. They get up to seven and they're not feeling too great all the time. They're not, you know, they have 
some good days, some bad days, but they're, they're, they're symptomatic. They get up to eight and you know, they're, they're, they're having daily issues because of the inflammation that they're, they're carrying in their system. If they're up there and a virus comes along, oh, they're at a 10 and nothing flat, nothing flat because <laughs> their, their threshold was, they, they have almost no capacity for further inflammation in their system. So we have to bring that total amount of, I call it global inflammation. We have to bring that down. Um, good lab tests for that, that I, I look at when I, I look at uh, patients, I look at um, C-reactive protein. I look at homocysteine. I also look at VLDL, very low density lipoprotein. Okay. And uh, if you have a, uh, I mean, those with those things, you could also look at uh, monocytes, eosinophils, and basophils, those types of white blood cells. They're all involved in inflammatory responses. And so, man, if you, if you're, if all of those things are high, even if you feel good, you're dealing with a lot of inflammation, a whole lot of inflammation. Um, my, uh, I have in my own clinic seen a, uh, uh, C-reactive protein uh, score of 175 on a zero to three scale. Um, it was astronomically off the charts, way, 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 you know, so it shouldn't have been over three and she was at 175. Um, through the different nutritional approaches that we, we have, that we use, we brought that down to 4.8 in six weeks. You know, it is, it is incredible. We can bring that down very, very quickly. And, um, you know, if a, if a traditional allopathic medical doctor slash medical doctor were to see that level, which, by the way, for those of you listening, you know, most doctors are not checking C-reactive protein. They're only checking it in specific instances, like if they're suspecting that you might have a heart issue or something like that. And, you know, we, we, feel that it, you know, that's something that should be run on everybody as a regular everybody. part of your testing um, and not wait until we think that there's a disease process before you start looking because inflammation leads to disease. So like that should be a part of regular testing. Um, but um, clinically, Dr. Newsom, wouldn't you agree that we do see, um, I mean, in probably 70% of the patients at least, that we're seeing high levels, like high levels, we're talking levels that are, that are high enough to lead to disease processes, right? Correct. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and, um, um, given my, oh, no, go ahead, go ahead. No, I was just going to say. Uh, given my, I, my, my, you know, my, the particular normal, quote unquote, normal patient for me in my case, uh, a lot of times they're coming in with three, four, five times the, lev the level of C-reactive protein in their blood as they should. So, I mean, they're well into that disease process and it's terrible. Um, yeah. It's really common. It is. And let's talk about, because I'm sure that the listeners are thinking a couple of things right now. Well, what the heck is causing that? And what do I do about it? What can I do like naturally? That, because, you know, we, we can get those levels down. And it's, you know, it's amazing how fast we can get these levels down. And so let's talk about, you know, like list off the top three or five things that are contributing to, to people's inflammation. Because, you know, this is super important information. If we're going to, you know, all of us as a country and as a world, if we're going to take better care of ourselves. We need to know what is causing this inflammation, things that we may be doing every single day that we don't even know about. Right. right. Um, there's a, a simple three-step process that I explain to my patients so you can understand inflammation and how your body, how it reacts to things. The body never develops an inflammatory response unless it's irritated. So I, I call it the three I's. Irritation leads to inflammation, which leads to infection. So if an inflamed, swollen body 
is just like a swimming pool that's not getting filtered. <laughs> it starts to grow anything, <laughs> okay? And then we call that infection, all right? But why did it get inflamed and swollen to begin with? Well, because it got irritated. Something caused that irritation. These are food allergies, okay, which go back to leaky gut, having a bad digestive system, dysbiosis in the gut, things, total imbalance in the gut, or just poor digestion, period, okay, leads to uh, your food allergies, number one. Number two is environmental chemicals. And a lot of times these are pesticides and herbicides, those types of things that we get from food, or they can also be uh, chemicals from, you know, the paint or the carpet or, you know, off-gassing chemicals from our environment. Uh, you know, car exhaust, those types of things. Yeah, there's um, environmental chemicals are irritants. They're, they're, okay, anything that's toxic is, is toxic or anything that's toxic is an irritant because it's toxic. <laughs> okay, so uh, heavy metals. Okay, so we got food allergies, environmental chemicals, heavy metals. Okay, I, I look at those things are the things that will drop your defenses and then open you up to the microbial issues that are irritants like parasites, like bacteria, fungus, other viruses, those things move into the system, triggering more and more inflammation. So when you have all these things kind of stacked up, you got, you know, reacting to, to food, whether it's good food or bad food. If you just, if you have poor digestion, you can even react to good food. If you have poor di digestion, you're going to react to both good food and bad food. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, so we got to correct that digestive system. So you, you're not reacting to the food you eat. Number one. Number two, we got toxicity. Then we have infections. And those are the, th I would say the three primary things that are triggering massive inflammation in people. And, and those, if you look at it from those categories, we have to correct gut issues and clean up your diet, okay? We have to detoxify, get rid of the, as many irritants from your system as possible. And we have to cleanse and purge our system of, of <laughs> bad bugs, you know, uh, infections, things like that. Get, and as we do that, that takes a huge load off of our immune system. So our immune system doesn't have to maintain that inflammatory response. It can start to settle down a little bit. Oh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and as it settles down, that level of inflammation comes down. Okay, if at the same time we feed the immune system, we give our body all the nutrients we need, we take our probiotics, we get enzymes, we, you know, all these different things, we build our immune system up, that increases its capacity to just kind of deal with all these other things. So they, they don't trigger such a big, uh, you know, knee jerk response from the immune system. Dr. Newsom, I love how you've explained that boosting the immune system is a lot more than just taking XYZ supplements. You know, it really does require taking a hard look at your diet, looking at your lifestyle, making sure your sleep is on point. We've talked about this, you know, with our past guests as well, but you have such an experience in doing the tinctures, like you said, and working with the herbs. For someone who is doing all the things you've mentioned, who they've worked on clearing environmental toxins, they're making sure their body's detoxing, they're, they're really working hard on their diet, what are some additional things like herbs, you know, that people can use mm -hmm. to help? Boost? Right, right. What are, there are, okay. I like, I like two particular groups of, of herbs that you can take on an ongoing basis because they're, they're not toxic and they enable the body to adapt and they enable the immune system to adapt, which is, if you go back to how I explained it earlier, it's when the immune system loses the ability to adapt is when you become sick and you stay sick. Okay, we call that chronic illness, but what happened is the immune system just couldn't adapt to anything anymore, and it, it, it succumbed to whatever it was that it, it was dealing with. So in that, from that standpoint, adaptogens like rhodiola, uh, astragalus, um, ashwagandha, um, even ginseng and gynostemma and you know, a lot of these herbs that 
just enable our system to adapt. Eleuthero is a great one, especially for, uh, for viral immunity. That, that's all kinds of studies have been done on that. Um, and then medicinal mushrooms, those are the, that's the other side. So you got chaga, rishi, maitake, uh, shiitake, cordyceps even. These are all fantastic uh, immune adaptogens is what I would categorize them as. And they enable the immune, the immune system to adapt to whatever it needs to adapt to. It's, it's not just to a virus or just to a parasite or just to a metal or just to this or just to that. It's increasing the capacity. It's kind of like exercise, okay? When you, you go to the gym, if you have an exercise for a year and you go to the gym and you, you connect with one of the personal trainers, if that personal trainer puts you through their fitness professional <laughs> workout routine, <laughs> you probably aren't gonna walk out of the gym, <laughs> right? Right? It's too much. It's way too much. You don't have the capacity to do that. Okay. So they, they start you on a regimen where you are doing what you can do. Okay. And then next week they bring you in, they do a little more and then they do a little more, you know, two years down the road, you're doing what the fitness professionals could do because you have the capacity to do that now. Okay. These things build our immune system the same way. You start taking it and it bumps you up a little bit. You keep taking it and it bumps you up a little more. With a little more time, you know, your immunity just improves and improves with it. And so these things are in, in traditional medicine, uh, in Ayurvedic medicine, in ch uh, traditional Chinese medicine, they would be considered tonics. And tonics give you that, uh, you can take them long term and they don't overstimulate anything. As a matter of fact, they, they help your, your system adapt. That's why they're called adaptogens. Okay, and adapting is so, so important because your, your immune system, I, I explain the immune system as a communication system, not just a defense mechanism. It's also a communication system. Okay, because it's, it's monitoring everything going on outside of your body and everything going on inside of your body. And if it can't adapt to what's going out on outside or inside, you get sick. Therefore, what, do we, what would be the most logical thing to do? Give it things that are going to help it adapt better. Okay, and start building that capacity. And just like going to the gym, you get a little better every time you go to the gym, right? Every time you're taking these things, you get a little better. Okay, and it just starts setting you ahead. That's, those would be the categories of things. I mean, that's what me and my family are taking. That's what my patients are taking. And that's what I would, I, I could safely recommend to everybody. Wonderful. We got some questions coming in from, from our listeners who are, who are listening right now. This one is from David. He's asking, um, my husband has CLL stage zero with WBC of 160. What would you recommend to help protect his immune system? I, I would probably go right back to those same two categories of, of herbs and either work with a functional medicine person that understands these things, or you might try one, see how you feel with it and, and see what the lab, see if your lab work improves with it and then try a different one or add a couple or look at different formulas. The nice thing about adaptogens and your, your, your medicinal mushrooms like reishi and maitake and chaga and all these is they, they're safe. I mean, these are, this, this is food that has specific effects where it helps your body adapt. <laughs> so, um, so those would be things to start, you know, start including them into your program. Um, that's Absolutely. what I would do. Yeah. Those are some really good tips. And then, you know, everyone don't forget too, that um, you might hear my grandbaby in the background. He's talking, he's, <laughs> he turns a year old and in, um, in just a few weeks. So super excited about that. Um, but uh don't forget too that because Dr. Newsom and I were talking about um, and educating you on um, a food being one of the major. This is my this is my other grandbaby. This is Mia. Everybody, say hi. Hi, Mia. <laughs> this is Dr. Newsom. He's a good friend of mine, and that's Anne. We have lots of people watching today. 
Um, so one of the uh, one of the things that we really want to do is we want to make sure that we change our foods out. Right, um, because you can take adaptogens and those and those types of tonics and botanicals all you want, but you know food is the foundation, and so we really want to make sure that we're putting that good food in. And then also before we get into the fall, you know if you haven't already, let's really start together, right? And, you know we're happy to bring you along with us. We can have Dr. Newsom back, hopefully Dr. Newsom, that you'll come back. Sure, and sure, sure. And we can do this by all means <laughs> and just, just really help you know start a movement where we can teach everybody you know how to eat how how do you do a food-based detox because you, we've got all summer you've got you've got all summer to go outside and get more fresh air you know these viruses they can't live outside they can't live outdoors um so you know um, if you are wearing a mask rip that thing off it's not helping you anyway get outside get some fresh air um, start eating really clean, do some food-based detoxes to help bring that inflammation down. Um, you know, you know, you can go work with Dr. Newsom or you can work with myself or there's a lot, there are a lot of functional, uh, and holistic coaches and doctors out there who can help, help you and check those, uh, you know, check your, your immune function, check those inflammatory markers. And you're going to see as you go through this process, how you bring this stuff down with food in a huge way. And then when you add the different botanicals to it, it just really, really can help you to maintain for the long haul, right? So that you can just really, really keep yourself healthy. And um, so, yeah, I just wanted to, just wanted to bring that up because, uh, you know, the botanicals are amazing. When you add botanicals and you add herbs and you add like CBD is amazing to help bring down inflammation. Oh my gosh, it works so amazing. When you combine the foods with the different herbals and botanicals and you add CBD, magic. it's magic. It, it is, it's like magic. magic. It brings the inflammation <laughs> down so fast. It's yeah. almost like miracle fast. Right, right. I, what's interesting is, you know, you you've had this experience. We, we all had this experience where you have a patient comes in. Um, I've had patients that would go to, you know, the big box stores and get the thousand tablet of 400 milligram ibuprofen and they'd go through two of them a month in their C-reactive, you know, and, and all of their inflammatory markers are just screaming off the you know, off the charts and they're able to get by by, you know, taking, the anti-inflammatories all day long and in in your first interview you're like well you know, you know they're saying well no i'm i'm feeling okay then we talk about how much um, anti-inflammatory medication they're taking well let's try let's try a week without the medications and see how you're doing <laughs> but oh man they can't function we start changing the diet we start adding some botanicals in there we start working on the gut all of a sudden they don't have to go reaching for that you know those anti-inflammatories anymore uh, it, and, yeah, and it, and it's so important for everybody to you know get a, an opportunity to learn that the anti-inflammatories is not fixing anything. It's basically covering up the check engine light. You know, the check engine light has turned on and it's trying to tell you something is wrong. Pull over. And but what do you do? You just put some black tape or some duct tape over the top of it and you keep going. Right. You're, you're going to do irreparable damage to the car. The same thing for your body. You're going to do irreparable damage to your body where at some point that Motrin's not going to work anymore. And you're wondering why. The reason why is because you never fixed what was causing the inflammation in the first place. And don't forget, I mean, you know, ibuprofen, if you, you know, if you accidentally smash your toe or, you know, you bring down a piece of furniture on your toe, like take it, you know, just like right. take it. Take, take 800 milligrams, like just do it, you know? Right. And if you, you know, if you combine it with some Tylenol, wow, you get an amazing pain relief effect like no other. But that's not something that you do on a regular basis. That's not what you should do on a regular basis. There are, there are repercussions to doing that. And if you're having to take Motrin or ibuprofen or Advil or something like that for this chronic inflammation or whatever you're having, consider that there's a bigger problem going on and you really want to figure out what's causing it and, and go in a different direction to get that under control. Because if you continue taking those, uh, those over-the-counter anti-inflammatories, you're really setting yourself up for, for a higher risk category to you know, uh, viruses. And not just this one, but you know, to any kind of illness or disease. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. 
Correct, correct. Um, <laughs> I, I call inflammation, um, you know, runaway river, right? The prescription and even over the counter, over the counter and even prescription anti-inflammatories are uh, a sandbag dam. Okay, and yep, they'll stop that river momentarily, but then they just crumble. Okay, and that river builds up force as it hits that <laughs> that sandbag dam. Okay. And then finally, it pushes that dam over. And when that happens, uh, you need increase your dose, right? <laughs> no, the problem the problem is we're treating what, not why. That's that is it's the whole problem. Is you know you're treating the inflammation, but why is you, you why do you have the inflammation to begin with? Is the problem not the problem? The problem isn't that you have inflammation; it's why you have it. Exactly. Exactly. Um, so we, we got to hit some really good points today. We got to talk about viruses and how, you know, there's a, and how there's a reason why there are bacteria and viruses on this planet and we can't fight them and we can't run from them. And in fact, you know, um, you know, if we trust in the creation, uh, you know, of our higher source that, you know, that, that there, um, that, we know that there's, you know, it's just a part of the ecosystem. And if our bodies are not responding well to it, is it really the virus's fault or is there something, or is there some kind of compromise in our body that's not allowing our body to handle it like 99% of the rest of the population? For the 1% of the population, you know, or what is the 0.1% rather, you know, whatever that number is, the 0.1%, um, you know, for those people that are not handling it well, I think we need to ask, you know, not, not like, how can we get rid of this virus? Cause that's impossible. That's never going to happen. It's, it's, we need to ask ourselves, you know, what, what are we doing? That's not allowing us to be resilient and be able to handle these different, um, you know, these different, why are, why are our defenses down? Right. Why? Right. So and what do we got to do to get our defenses back up again? You know, that's, that's what we need to be asking. That's the, and that's, that's the, there's a million dollar question, you know, <laughs> a million dollar question. And we were able to go over some of that stuff today, you know, so we were able to talk about some of the primary causes of inflammation and how coming into a situation where you're already inflamed, you know, that's just, you know, that's where the body can't handle, can't handle its own healing process because we walked into this already having a problem, maybe not really realizing it right. And then, and then we also got to talk about some different botanicals and things that we can do to help strengthen our immune system. Uh, and I liked how you mentioned, you know, some of the different adaptogens because that's not something that's talked about very much. And so hopefully for the listener, you guys, you know, got to learn something new to stick in your back pocket as far as information, because, you know, yes, the vitamin C is important. Yes, the zinc is important. You know, yes, uh, the vitamin D is important. And you've heard that a million times. And so we kind of got to, got to hit it from a little bit of a different angle today. My, my, my thought, okay, vitamin D, vitamin C, zinc, all of these nutrients, you need to have them in your system already. Those are the working nuts and bolts of your machinery. If you're missing those, your machinery can't operate properly. Those are, those are basic in, in my, uh, my book, in my opinion. You need, to, you need to be making sure you're getting all those nutrients just to begin with. <laughs> you shouldn't have to take more of those. You should be already taking them, <laughs> okay? Because if you're not taking, again, I tell people this. Okay, so if you took, and if you're on the standard American diet, the standard American diet supplies 20% of the total nutrients that you need on a daily basis. Meaning, if that's all you're getting, you're 80% deficient to begin with. Okay, so if we went to your car and randomly removed 80% of the nuts and bolts, would you get in it and try to start it? Well, why would you try to start your body and get it up out of bed every day if you're... <laughs> <laughs> what's the chances of something breaking down as you know it's inevitable it's not not probable it's inevitable so making sure you get those nutrients that's basic that's basic taking care of your body 101 make sure you give it the nutrients it needs in order to function otherwise it won't 
That's true. And, uh, you know, most people are deficient in their, in their basic nutrients. And so it is a really, really good idea to actually, you know, take this stuff on a regular basis. Um, gosh, Dan. Oh, there's my little one. Come here. Here's my <laughs> other grandbaby. Oh, <laughs> this is, this is William Hamilton ship the fifth. Mm. And my granddaughter Mia, come over here. Just wanted to say hi. No, I know, Dr. Dan, you're a family guy, and and I uh, wanted to show you my little family. It was just William and I growing up for many years. Just my son and I. So we were a tiny, 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 tiny little family, just the two of us. And um, now I finally have my dream. I have a beautiful daughter-in-law. And, uh, and now I have two grandkids and my heart is just overflowing. And so I'm happy Excellent. to share with you, my family. <laughs> They're beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming today. You know, <laughs> I, you. Love, I love the way that you explain things and you have so much information to share. And honestly, you know, I'm not trying to put you on the spot, but you know how much I love you, but you know, we would love to have you back, like on a regular basis. If you know, if if no if, problem, for sure, for sure. I feel like the more that we can get get the message out there and just teach people, you know, we can help. We can help change the world, you know, because it's not just the people here in the U.S., right? Like, there's so many people around the world who need this information, and and if we could do it, you know, together, but I would just love it. It would be like we're superheroes. We just jump sure. up. For sure, for sure, for sure. <laughs> Wait, I love to share. You know, um, I've I've done extensive, extensive, extensive education, and it does no good if it's all stuck in my head. <laughs> if I don't share it, it it's it really isn't worth much. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. I I love to share for sure. Good. Thank you. And let me type into the chat box here um, where people can find you um you know your website um and whatever other information that I, that uh that you give me i would love to Thank share you. with them everyone right now it's um drnewsum.com www.drnuzum.com that's the best place to to get a hold of me there um uh, people can connect you through through there um the uh, the email for the websites info at drnuzum.com um and by all means you know we we actually we also do videos where we just take questions that people are sending in and we'll i do a video um responses to to questions and things like that that we're we're about to load a whole bunch of those onto youtube here real quick so um uh it'll be something maybe not as not, not anywhere near as extensive as this but we do answer people's questions so <laughs> oh i doubt that i know that you give just the best information and um you know that's actually a really that's actually a really great concept to be able to answer people's questions on video and then post it um mm -hmm. and so i definitely would love to share your uh, your information on our upcoming newsletter um if that's Thank okay you. so that people For can sure. have you know we do post videos and stuff, but you do too. And, you know, um, uh, I think that you're probably posting even more than we are. So I would love to be able to send people there for reference. And then maybe in the future, we can even do some more stuff together um, as far as some training videos. So well, that would be fantastic. Excellent. That would be excellent. Well, thank you again. We know that you're busy, so we are going to let you go. And God bless you and God bless your family. And thank you for everything that you do for everyone. Thank you. Likewise. Likewise. It was very, very good to see you both. Thank you. Yeah. Folks, take care. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for joining.